I share the video about how Chinese changed my life because it did, dramatically so. But I never shared how I actually learned Chinese, so I thought that would be a natural follow up. I'll go into how I learned the language really soon. Um, I'll put a timestamp below if you want to go there immediately. But first, I'm just going to share where I'm currently at in my Chinese, like where my Chinese is currently at. I've never taken an HSK exam, but if I were to take one, I think I would start with HSK 4. After studying Chinese for about a year, I actually plan to take the exam. Here is the HSK 4 book that I got. And I do not plan to tear this one into pieces, although I have not opened it for years, to be honest. <laughs> if I were to take the HSK exam now, I'd make sure to take it on a computer in order to avoid handwriting. I absolutely suck at handwriting. I did alright when I was studying, but I have not kept it up. And if you do not keep up with your Chinese handwriting, you forget. And I have not only forgotten, but I also have the ugliest handwriting ever. So these notes are actually in 2016. Um, so these are my characters when I was actively writing, and they are still really ugly. <laughs> So I don't write well by hand, but I do type well. And this is because I type a lot, both on my phone and on my computer. For everyday situations, I am fluent both in reading, writing, listening and speaking, but in more advanced situations, I'm not. So for those situations, I always, always prefer face-to-face -face communication because that way you can get and also give away a bit more clues through your body language, your facial expressions and even sound effects. <laughs> So simply put it, I use my vocabulary well, but it is small. And now let's look at some examples of how I can and cannot use my Chinese. Do I read books in Chinese? I try sometimes, but my vocabulary is still a little bit too small for it to work. For this particular book though, I've actually made it to page 69, which is my personal record. Do I watch Chinese films? Yes, that's usually not a problem because in a movie, there are a lot more clues to what's going on than just the language. Would I conduct a job meeting in Chinese? If it was with kind and patient people who knew that my vocabulary was quite limited, I would do it, that would be okay. But if it came to discussing, you know, terms or contracts, I would not do it alone. Would I study in Chinese? This one I would say is both a yes and a no. I would not take university classes in Chinese, I would mess up way too much and just be at a huge risk of misunderstanding everything. At the same time, if it was something more physical, like dance classes or ceramics classes, then I think I would be fine. Can I hang out with friends and family? Yes, I would say I'm pretty good at that. So now, how did I learn Chinese? Well, it began with me being in China. I came for an exchange semester in 2015. During that semester, I did take a course in Chinese, but I honestly don't really count it. My priority was all my other classes, and Chinese was an easy pass. The coming semester, I decided to stay in China and study Chinese full-time, and now I began again in the very beginner's class, since my level was too low for intermediate. And so I studied Chinese for a whole year full-time. And this was amazing. And if I can give any advice to anyone who's about to start studying Chinese, if you can study in China full-time, that will be so, 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 so beneficial. I think everyone in my class who studied for a year and who passed all the classes could easily do HHK3 and most could also do HHK4 without too much struggle. My teacher spoke only Chinese and we were surrounded by Chinese and Chinese culture also outside of the classroom. And my classmates came from all over the world. Some spoke very little or no English. One of my closest friends was Korean and we quickly began to speak to each other in Chinese only. And I really think an ongoing personal relationship is the best motivation to improve and learn much better in those kind of far-fetched ideas that in the future I want to use Chinese in work. Although of course it's good to have long-term goals too. The student that improved the most that I know of, she studied really hard, but she also joined a lot of after-class activities with all the local Chinese students. 
So she just made a lot of local friends and immersed herself completely in the language. During my year of studying Chinese, I also traveled a lot, which is the second thing I would really recommend. As an introvert, I think it was crucial that I did a lot of my traveling alone. That way I had to force myself out of my comfort zone and had no extrovert travel companion that could take care of the conversations for me. And after less than half a year studying Chinese, I actually began making friends in Chinese, also outside of my classmates. And I began dating Yo Hong, who I married in 2017. Studying Chinese, I would 100% recommend having a teacher. Not because the information isn't available, but because the structure it gives you and preferably a teacher in real life. But I think there are a lot of online options now with online teachers and I think also books and apps gives you some sort of structure. After I graduated from Fuda University in Shanghai, my studying became a lot less structured and I find it difficult to maintain routines. So the following years and all the way up until now have been a mixture of different things. Now I've tried reading but like I mentioned before, I find it quite difficult to read books. But what I have um, managed to read are little articles on WeChat about topics that I'm actually interested in. And then of course I read when I'm typing with friends and family on WeChat. After university, I tried to give up my handwriting for a bit. I wrote a diary in Chinese for a little while, a little bit every day. But then like most routines, I just couldn't keep it up. I guess I just lacked the proper motivation. But if you are a person who does like journaling, who does it anyways, I think it's a really good idea to write a paragraph or two paragraphs in Chinese every day. It's also really good for your handwriting. <laughs> for typing, I'd recommend to type with friends. And if you like writing, to write down little stories or your thoughts. Another thing you can do is to just start commenting on Chinese videos here on YouTube um, or on any other social media platform. I think it's a good way to, you know, learn to express your thoughts and opinions um, in, in a not very, a very unstrict way. And if you want to consume some Chinese social media, if you're not familiar with Chinese social media, I will link to some of the most popular um, sites down in the description box. For listening, I don't think music is ideal. I'd rather say films or even podcasts or audiobooks. I have actually never listened to a Chinese podcast or a Chinese audiobook, so please, if you have, if you know of any good ones, I will pin a comment in the comment section and write your tips there so we can all see them. That would be so, so, I would be so, so grateful for that. But compared to music, I think films are great because you also learn how phrases are used. And often the Chinese films come with subtitles in Chinese, so you also practice your reading when you are watching a movie. I had a period where I'd go on IT and just watch any modern romantic drama. They are easy to follow and also cover many daily life situations. If you're learning Chinese outside of China, I also really recommend trying to find a Chinese community, Chinese friends and activities that are related to Chinese culture, and also to read books about China, books by Chinese authors but in your language, etc. It all helps create images and references that will be useful also when you learn the language. Hi. Language and culture are inseparable. It's hard to speak Chinese if you do not understand the culture and it's hard to understand the culture if you do not speak Chinese. The language teaches you how to say something and then the culture teaches you what to say and when to say it. My Chinese has not improved that much these past few years, apart from fluency in what I already know. I'm actually planning to go back to uni in a few years to continue studying Chinese, now with the goal to be able to read proper books. But it will have to wait. So until then, it is my family, friends, films, apps and books that keep me going and helps me improve at least a little bit. And also, I want to say that I'm starting a little film club through Instagram, a Chinese film club, where we watch one Chinese movie per month and then just discuss it together. And if that sounds interesting to you, please go and follow me on Instagram. And on Instagram, you can also find a highlight called Chinese Movies, where I have just gathered a whole lot of Chinese movie recommendations. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching and uh, if you are learning Chinese as a second language, please feel free to share your story in the comment section. 
I think it would be really interesting to read. So the little cards are ready now. They are seed cards. Um, with seeds from our citron pepper tree. So I'm going to send them out to my patrons in my gift box this year. And uh, that way our citron pepper tree can spread all over the world. It will actually also be my very last gift box. I am closing Patreon this year. Which, um, I mean, I've made these boxes. I've had Patreon for five years, made these boxes for five years. Um, and closing Patreon feels a bit sad and also a bit scary. Um, it's been such a security and comfort for me to have, but I am closing it, making room for something else. 2023 will be a year of change. There'll be a lot of changes to my life, um, to what we do. So that's, that's where the decision came from. Um, and I will actually, if anybody wants to support me, I will be opening a YouTube membership as well. I can make a little pre-launch in this video. <laughs> you, can, you can find probably a little button below that says, I don't know what it says, maybe become a member. Or um, something with, it should say, say something with member or memberships. Um, and if you want to support me there, you can do that. I will make a proper launch. <laughs> I will talk about it more in another video. But just for anybody who's still still watching, you can, um, you can find information about it below. And uh, yeah. I'm going to continue making these. I will wrap them. I'm wrapping them in a little bit of paper and Yo Hong will write something in calligraphy in the back. Probably just Hua Jiao citron pepper because it's citron pepper. But uh, he will do it. I will not. I will not write calligraphy. <laughs> my, my handwriting is bad, but my calligraphy is uh, worse. <laughs> you do not want to see my calligraphy. Um, it might hurt your eyes. So yeah that's that's what i will be doing now and uh, i will see you in another video thank you for watching <laughs> and remember to remember to write your little story about learning chinese or learning another language below